<laughs> the, the, the Aer Lingus and the Airlines, Air, Irish Airline Pilots Association, IALPA, that we'll call them from now on, have obviously been embroiled in this very, very public, very, very well-known paid disputes. Um, the Republic of Ireland's Labour Court issued the invitation to both parties to review the situation after earlier discussions broke down. Yeah, I'm sure if you're an Aerolingus customer, you'll know that pilots are engaged in an indefinite work to rule. There was also an eight-hour strike staged on Saturday and hundreds of flights have been cancelled since the beginning of this industrial action and services. Well, they're affected so far up until the 7th of July. So this is a dispute over pay. We've gone through the numbers plenty of times over the course of uh, this saga, we'll call it. Uh, the Pilots Union, they want 24% added to their pay, something Aer Lingus says just is not doable. Owen Corey, travel journalist, has been following developments closely for us uh, over the last number of weeks. Uh, Owen, are you hearing anything today from these I, talks? No, uh, nothing is being heard and nothing will be heard. Uh, saga is the word. The real key is we will be watching if the talks actually get underway or break down. And I suppose there is a clock ticking in terms of Aer Lingus making a decision about further disruption, further cancellations. The clock that's ticking really is the seven day notice of cancellations. And these are preemptive cancellations by Aer Lingus of about 10 flights a day. Uh, that seems to be working. It means that passengers are told in advance that their flight is cancelled. They're being rerouted. They're being uh, brought to their destination by whatever means possible, rather than being told at the gate. That's what you do not want in aviation. Mm. But uh, the Saturday, when Saturday we had a one-day strike, which is a slightly different type of action. I think that was a test by both sides. I also had a good show of support uh, at the airport in their protest, and Aer Lingus managed to fly through it. They, uh, with great difficulty, it has to be said, they brought, they protected their transatlantic flights, brought them uh, forward. They, it was designed to hit the transatlantic flights, and they brought those they, uh, forward and put the concertina them into about a two-hour period. Got all the passengers passengers in, got all the passengers out, because it's not like 20 years ago, a lot of people fly into Dublin to fly to America and fly from America to fly yeah. on to, onward to Europe. Uh, it is, it, Dublin is a hub in a way it wasn't before. So big challenge for Aer Lingus, they got through it, but they won't want to see too many more of them. No, and just just finally, Owen, uh, you know, we're obviously waiting to see if anything emerges or happens today, but I suppose for Aer Lingus too, there is the, the fact that people are probably reluctant to book with them, given this industrial real action given the uncertainty so damage is being done whether or not they, they are preempting those cancellations you have it on the button tens of millions of euro lost in uh, forward bookings no forward bookings going to Aer Lingus whatsoever at the moment and while the action remains over end open ended as the work to rule is that's unlikely to change very important that we get uh, first of all we hold the talks together for the the initial period uh, and that they don't break down because they do despite their difference of pay 24% on one side 12% on the other um, there's a lot more to talk about because uh, there are 26 different grades of pilot play a Rubik's Cube of allowances uh, the, the suspicion is the deal will be pay for productivity at the end of this the real problem is keeping uh, two very belligerent sides in the mm. same room without it breaking down Owen thank you for keeping across that for us that's Owen Corey, travel journalist.